Good morning everybody! It is the 5th of July and we are so excited to be in your house, wherever you might be finding yourself. Um, I do know that there are some other people that are watching from your bed. You're sitting in your bed right now and um, we're in the gathering garage. And uh, so I want you to, if you're sitting in your bed and watching this, this is confession time guys, come on, be real now. Just give us a thumbs up that you're sitting in bed. I would love to see how many people are sitting in bed and watching this live streaming message. Um, it's going to be quite funny when we go back. Um, I think you're going to go there with your pajamas and come with your night, nightgown and your coffee and um, uh, a recliner to church um, when we get back to the building. But um, if you're sitting in bed and you're watching, please give us a thumbs up. For those of you sitting in front of a TV or a device at some table or in your uh, living room, um, man, you're just champions. God bless you and um, you all are. So it's wonderful to be with you this morning. It's a great day. This is a day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, know that every Wednesday evening and every Friday evening at 6 o'clock we bring out a word of encouragement for the week uh, where some of the disciples are just sharing what God is doing with them and through them. And um, specifically I was blessed this week uh, with Tian's message when he was speaking about the whole principle of blessed to be a blessing and um, if you've not watched it yes, please go and watch that. Um, it speaks about, and he goes on and he says, well, we have been forgiven so that we can forgive. A oh, powerful message. And about how big is your God? And so uh, let's not limit our God because he is limitless. Um, he is the author. He is the creator of all things. And so I want to encourage you to get into those messages on a Wednesday and a Friday evening and share it abroad. Wherever you have friends and family, do share that with them. It's also on YouTube. But that's where we load it. So for those who don't have Facebook, I know there's many people that still doesn't have Facebook and we honor that. But uh, they can go and have a look at those messages and um, share them. Share them from our Facebook page. Share them wherever you want to. And um, if you are tuning in for the very first time, on the Gathering Facebook page, well, welcome. Um, I saw that there are uh, new people that have liked our um, Gathering Facebook page and we welcome you. Um, I see people from Bloemfontein and from just all over just starting to join in on these live streamings and we just want to welcome you. And then last but not least, I want to also say this morning, if you've had a birthday, be that physical or spiritual in the past week, we just want to congratulate you. My father, on the 2nd of July, the same day that um, Lizette had a birthday this week, uh, my father celebrated 45 years of serving the Lord. And while he said that, I was just so blessed in that moment, um, having hardly words to speak. Um, that is three years older or longer than I'm alive and um, serving the Lord passionately. So that I just want to give a shout out to you today. And just honor you for your faith and your diligence and the fact that you are serving the Lord passionately and um, you and mom just love you. So uh, that's a little bit personal on, uh, <laughs> on an international platform, a social platform, but I want to just say God bless you all and uh, keep on serving the Lord. If you are serving the Lord, keep on serving the Lord. So um, I want to just say to you this morning, I can't wait to get into the Word. And uh, we would love to know where you're watching from, so please just quickly write down there. I'm watching from um, Kuruman or from wherever you're watching, so that we can just see. And um, if any time you want us to get in contact with you, you might have a question or you want something that you want an answer on or you need prayer, please write it there in the comment box. If it's personal, please inbox us. You will see that there is a number where you can just text us and we can come back to you and do that for you. Uh, meanwhile, we are still gathering on a Sunday as a live stream um, on social media. Um, I know you guys want to get together, back together. We do the same. But um, family, keep strong um, and keep your focus on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. But with that being said, welcome and uh, let's get into today's word. But I'm going to start off by just praying and then we will continue. Lord, I want to thank you for this day. Lord, 
I want to thank you this morning that I can declare my total dependency upon you because you are God and we are not. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that in this moment that you will speak through me as a vessel. I am only a vessel. And I pray, God, that the living waters of your truth, of your word, will flow today and that it will bring life to wherever the seed of God will fall and that there will be a great coming forth of fruit and a harvest in people's lives and that we will live accountably to you and for you and for your kingdom's sake in Jesus' mighty name. You be glorified and blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So yesterday I made a quick video um, and don't worry while I was driving um, I just pressed the play button once to record and I kept my eyes on the road on the N1 and um, then I just stopped it and uh, just said to you, listen, I'm really excited about today's word. And today's words, a message is entitled presumptuous, presumptuous, I know it's big words, presumptuous, or the other way to say it is arrogant faith. So the title for this morning's message is presumptuous or arrogant faith, which should not be part of a believer's life in the kingdom of God. Now, I came to this message in the week while reading the Word of God and specifically Psalm 19. Now, just to give you a little bit of an of a understanding of what Psalm 19 is about and why it's been written, we'll read the verses now, but th just so that you know, it's, it's actually made up uh, or divided into two main parts. And the reason for that is, is that this psalm, um, appropriately unites the two ways God has revealed himself to man. So God wants and has always wanted to reveal himself to man. The first way, if you're making notes, the first way by which God um, in this psalm is revealing himself to man is by general revelation in his creation. We find that in verses 1 to verses 6. So by general revelation in his creation, God is revealing himself to man. I want us to just quickly go to Romans 1 verse 19 and 20. And let's just read that together. Romans 1. If you have your Bible, you're welcome to turn with me there. I'm doing it from the tablet, so it goes quickly. Uh, the Word of God says in Romans 1 verse 19 and verse 20 the following. It says, because... What may be known of God is manifest in him, for God has showed it to them. For since the creation of the world, um, uh, the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, I know the writer of this specific book was speaking to the people that were in Rome and they had issues and they had struggles. And he was saying to them that you actually don't have any excuse because what was made by God could clearly be seen uh, by man and that we can acknowledge that there is the Godhead. And I want to just make it very clear that at the gathering, we believe in God the Father. We believe in the Trinity. We believe in God the Father. We believe in God the Son. And we believe in God the Holy Spirit. And they all are doing their part in the kingdom so that we as kingdom ambassadors and servants can live out what we need to do. I thank Holy Spirit for being in us right now so that we can bring this message across to the glory and honor of his wonderful name. And then the second way in which God reveals himself to man is by specific revelation in his inspired word. I want to make emphasis on the fact that it speaks about his inspired word. You'll find that in verse 7 to verse 14. A cross reference to that specific statement is in Hebrews, and it's in Hebrews 1. Um, now I'm thinking about coffee. Hebrews 1. <laughs> Hebrews 1 from verse 1 to verse 4. The word of God says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in the last days spoken to us by his son, son, whom he has appointed heir over all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Can you say amen? 
who being the brightness of His glory. Come on. Come on. The Word of God says that we are the light of God and the salt of the earth. And He says that Jesus being the light of His glory, the brightness of His glory, and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty of on high having become so much better say so much better say it with me so much better by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they i want to say to you today that jesus christ according to philippians he has died on the cross he was resurrected from the dead and the word of god says that he has a name and that name is above every other name and because of jesus christ we have full access to the father he is the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through jesus christ and so i want to just encourage you with that so the two ways in this song how god is saying to us that he's revealing himself to man is one is by general revelation in his creation of what he has created and the second one is by revelation in his inspired word and so that brings us to psalm 19 and if you have your bible i want you to turn with me there we're going to read verse 1 verse 2 and then from verse 7 to verse 14. i'm just giving you a moment to quickly get there or make write down um the the, the verses we're going to read and then also i just want to in this moment just say to you that if ever you want the message notes um I believe that we are blessed to be a blessing and I'm willing to whoever would like to get the message notes notes if you can't write that fast or you get just half of it you're welcome to just inbox us and say I, I want the message notes and we will gladly send it to you and um, so that you can go over it again meditate upon the word and just let the truth of God sink into your life in Jesus name so let's go to Psalm 9, uh, 19 we're going to read this one and verse 2 the word of God says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge so every single day day in and day out uh, from sunrise to sunset and the next day i want to say to you that god is revealing himself in creation then we go to verse 7 the word of god says the law of the lord is perfect the instruction of the lord the way of the lord is perfect can you say amen on that amen. the word of god says converting the soul converting there's a change in the soul now we know that our soul our, is our mind our intellect our will our emotions and um, after becoming born again we need a conversion of the soul now um, i'm speaking right up the alley to those mechanics and people that are into tuning and chip tuning and and all these things in cars, um, these upgrades that can be done on vehicles. So you buy a two liter and it's putting out uh, um, 118 kilowatts. But if you take it to a specific shop and you do a tuning or a chip tuning on that vehicle, it can put up the, the boost of the turbos and all the stuff in that vehicle. Ooh, I'm trying, I'm stepping on on eggs now at the moment but it can go up to 148 kilowatts from 118 so there's more power there's just more effectiveness in that vehicle so uh, when they build the vehicles there's more to be uh, to be gotten out of or getting out of that vehicle's performance but you need a conversion and you need a, a transformation and so the word of god says that we should not be transformed to this world or conformed to this world but we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and here the word of god says in verse 7 the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul he says the testimony of the lord is sure come on say it is sure the testimony of the lord is sure making wise the simple he says the statues of the lord are right the statues of the lord are right they're not wrong they're not uh, feeble they are not um, wonky they are right 
The word of God says, enlightening the eyes. He says, the commandment of, of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, the much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Verse 12 says, Who can understand his errors? He's speaking about us. Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Dominion over me. I want to say to you, this is a powerful portion of scripture. We shouldn't let presumptuous sins have dominion over us. Arrogant sins, it shouldn't have dominion over us as children of God. We should be living free in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And then he says, then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. He says in verse 14, let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart mm -hmm. be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, mm -hmm. my strength and my redeemer. Mm -hmm. um, there's that song that we sing. My redeemer loves. My redeemer loves. I want to say to you, our redeemer, he loves. Mm -hmm. He's alive. Now, I want to just quickly sum up the first verses from verse 7 to 11. And I want to say it like it is as follows. I want to sum it up. It says... If you and I want a converted soul, be wise while we are simple. Have a rejoicing heart, enlightened eyes, the fear of the Lord forever. And having the desire after the truth of God while being warned that what not to do and what to do, we will be rewarded. Now, I don't know about you. But when we do things, it is great to be rewarded. It's great to be rewarded. It's wonderful to be rewarded. There's a sense of satisfaction and just the blessing of knowing that you have accomplished something and that you are rewarded. When someone comes to you and they say to you, well done, I tell you that is a great reward. If someone gives you something because you've done some, something, it's a great reward. But yeah, I've as I've just summed up those few verses. I want to say to you, who has the fear of the Lord forever and having the desire of the truth of God while being warned not to do and what to do, we will be rewarded. If we are genuine believers and part of the kingdom of God, we will desire, say desire, say desire after me, desire of the truth of God and do his will and word. Amen. So in Luke 9, 23, Jesus said to his disciples, if you desire to become my disciple, you will do what? Amen. You will deny yourself. You will take up your cross daily and you will follow me. There must be a desire, a desire. Yes. So now I want to say to you in verse 12 to 14, it speaks about the correct response to seeing and hearing God's revelation is personal introspection so when he says in verse 12 let me just read it to you so that we are just on the same page who can understand his errors cleanse me from secret faults so when the writer of this psalm is saying this he's saying hey i've got sin in my life i've got faults in my life but while saying that and acknowledging that that's wonderful but it doesn't mean that you are repenting from it. It doesn't mean that you are having an appropriate response to that which you know which is wrong or sinful. And so here I want to say to you today that that verse 12 to 14 speaks about the correct response to seeing and hearing God's revelations is personal introspection. I want to challenge you today. Uh, Lizette and myself were speaking about the word this morning and, and one of the things that I said to her is that many a times when we bring the word of God or speak the word of God, people feel really judged. People feel like, hey, you're speaking down on me and you are speaking uh, badly about me and you are condemning me and you are judging me and that's not necessarily the case. I want to say to you that when we hear the word of God, 
we should respond to the Word of God. And one of the ways in which we respond to the Word of God is by introspection. And uh, you can go and read about that in um, James 1 from verse 20 to 25, that don't just be a hearer of the Word, but be a doer of the Word. So I want to say to you as believers in the kingdom that we need to respond appropriately to hearing the Word of God. And one of those is, is not just to always look like that and show fingers like that, but that we will say, what is God saying to me? I need to know what God is saying to me personally, so that I can first sort out myself. Uh, I need to take out that big piece of wood in my own eye before I can take out the speck in someone's other, uh, somebody other, uh, else's own eye. So with that being said, I don't want to be caught up in that much today. I want to get to that specific portion about presumption and arrogant faith. But before we do that, I want to read just Psalm uh, 19 um, in the message translation. It reads as follows, verse 11. There's more God's word. Word warns us of danger and directs us to hidden treasure. Man, isn't that nice? God's word warns of us of danger and directs us to hidden treasure. I don't know about you, but I want the treasure in God's word. Otherwise, how will we find our way or know when we play the fool? Clean the slate. God, so we can start the day fresh. Keep from stupid sins. <laughs> this is that word, presumptuous, arrogant. Uh, in the message it says, keep from stupid sins. From thinking I can take over his work. I can't take over his work. His work is a complete work on the cross. I need to subject and surrender myself unto his work. And then it goes on. Then I can start this day. Sun washed, scrubbed clean of the grime of sin. These are the words in my mouth. These are what I chew on and pray. Accept them when I place them on the morning altar, O God. My altar rock, God, priest of my altar. I just love the way the message was saying that. But let's tackle the truth in verse 13 that says the following. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous, arrogant sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Faith is not presumption. Or said in another manner, faith is never arrogant. Authentic or true faith is founded on the promises of God in His Word. That's where you find true faith. In God's Word and in His promises. It is not presumptions, presumptuous or arrogant. Presumption or arrogant ideas about faith lead us to having attitude or behavioral sin which in turn leads to missing the mark of faith, true meaning. Come on, I'm going to say that again. Presumptuous or arrogant ideas about our faith leads us to having an attitude or behavioral sin. It's, it comes from within, which in turn leads to missing the mark of faith, true meaning in our daily walk. Presumptuous attitudes are present in the name of faith in a person, either when he thinks faith is wishful thinking or a fanciful attitude, assuming God should relieve all their discomfort and jump to their request immediately. That is wishful thinking or fanciful attitude it speaks about an attitude of the heart which is presumptuous it's arrogant to think that if we prayed a prayer or we've done something by the flick of our fingers that god should just respond and and if god doesn't respond then i'm angry at him i'm cross at him and i'm really really do we know that we are speaking 
to the creator of heaven and earth. Do we understand that we are in a right standing relationship with God, the author of our lives, the one that brings breath into our lungs? I want to say to you that I honor my earthly father, my father-in-law. I honor my mother, my mother-in-law. I honor my wife and our children and those who are around me. And I want to tell you if ever I have an attitude with one of them, I really have to quickly get down to confession. And with that being said, aren't we sometimes very arrogant by saying, I'm cross at him. Really? Can we do that? I know that many a times when I would correct one of the children, they would say that they had a, they'd had a bad day because of one correction. But I know one thing, that we are speaking into their lives so that they might come to a place where they would honor and have a, a great relationship and that they won't be arrogant or presumptuous in their faith and in the way they're living. But that doesn't mean that they are cross and angry at us. That just means that they have been corrected. Another way in which attitudes are present when in the name of faith a person is doing stuff that is wrong is rejects. That person rejects any responsibility on their part to offer a devoted heart and to commit to serve him regardless of their life condition. Regardless. You reject any responsibility on your part to offer a devoted heart and the commitment to serve Him regardless of your life condition. You say, Stephen, you are speaking easily. You might say that. You just might not know me that well. I want to say to you today, you will know that I have many times in the past said the following. We don't serve God for what we can get from Him. We serve God for who He is. He is God. And because He is God, I serve Him. I love Him, I adore Him, I exalt Him, I praise Him, I live for Him every single day. When I wake up and I've got breath in my lungs, I stand up to the glory and honor of His name and I walk out of this house and I do what I need to do, no matter the conditions of life that we are facing. You might say, you don't know my situation and you are right. But I want to say to you, don't be presumptuous in your faith or arrogant and saying, you know what? I'm not going to take that responsibility on me. Don't have that attitude. That is attitude or behavioral sin. And it's not part of our kingdom, ambassador and, and citizen's life. We shouldn't be living like that. Presumptuous, presumptuous desires. The promise of God without living a life for God. And is hypocritical in his sight. Like the Pharisees in the days of Jesus. I want to say it again. Presumption desires the promise of God. So presumption, arrogance, desires the promise of God. They want all the benefits of God. You want everything that God has for you in the Word. You want all the faith. You want all the, the wonderful miracle signs, healings, and all the things that go with. You want the prosperity. You want all these things. But you are hypocritical in your life because it's all about just that like the days when the Pharisees were doing things. In Matthew 15 verse 8, you can read there with me, in Matthew 15 verse 8, the Word of God says, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But, you see that but? But their heart is far from me. Jesus was saying this about the Pharisees. They were bitter enemies of Jesus and his cause and were in turn severely rebuked by him for their avarice. You might be saying, Stephen, now you are saying a, a big word. Avarice means to get earthly possessions and have just many things. Uh, for their avarice, their ambition they were rebuked for, hollow reliance on outward works. An affection of piety in order to gain popularity. I want to say to you that the Pharisees were out there. And all they were doing constantly. And you can go and read in the Beatitudes 
or the other name being known for it is, um, uh, goodness gracious, now it's just left me for a moment, um, Matthew 5, Matthew 6, and Matthew 7, Sermon on the Mount. Um, just for a moment, it just left me. On the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus was speaking, and then he was speaking specifically to the Pharisees. Actually, he had his disciples around him. Um, he sat on the mountain, and he was teaching them on um, behavior, behavioral um, attitude, and all those things. And he said to them, don't be like the Pharisees who go out into the street, stands on the corners, and pray so that everybody can see them. Don't be like the Pharisees that when they fa- uh, they um, they are um, fasting, that they've got long faces and you, you, they, they're asking, people are asking, what are you doing? Don't be like the Pharisees that when you give, that everybody should know about it. No, don't be like that. You see, the Pharisees were just on the outward appearance, but from the heart, there was nothing. They've already received their reward because man has praised them. And I want to tell you that we should be careful not to be pharisaical in our way of life as believers in the kingdom. We don't need the approval of man. When I bring a message, I don't have to ask anyone, how was it? Was it great or was it good? And I often do that. Why? It's not that I want just the recognition of man, but um, I have to be careful not to get the appraisal of man. Just saying, sure, but you're really up right up front this morning. Yes. We need to look into our hearts as to why we are asking certain things. I want to say to you that when we bring a message, we are really trusting the Holy Spirit to speak to us. That's why it's a two-edged sword. First the sword cuts to me and then it comes to you. Now, to protect us from a presumptions, presumptuous or arrogant attitude like the Pharisees, so amen, praise God, all right, so we don't have to be pharisaical. So to protect us, do you want Three keys to protect you from being like the Pharisees. Can you just say Amen? Say Amen, 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 Amen. Just raise up your hands and say, Lord, I don't want to be like a Pharisee. I want to serve you truthfully from my heart with everything that is in me. Here's the good news today. Well, one, the first key to being not having a presumptuous or arrogant attitude of faith like the Pharisees is one, root your faith in what God in Christ has provided in His redemption. Not on what you might gain through presumptuous faith exercises like the Pharisees did, showboating by publicly praying, fasting with long faces, and always giving to be seen. With that being said, a scripture that I want to link to that specific thing and that key Root your faith in what God has done in Christ and has provided in His redemption is in Galatians 2 verse 20. Galatians 2 verse 20 says the following, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Can you say Amen? If Christ lives in you, just write there, Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh Come on, guys. There's many people that think that we are already in heaven. Um, I tell you, we are seated in heaven, but we're still living on earth. And that life we are living on earth, it says the following. It says, And the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. It doesn't say that I live by faith in the Son of recognition of man, or the appraisal of man, or the approval of man. I live it by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Man, I've got an excitement and thankfulness this morning. Lord, I want to thank you that we no longer live, but Christ, you live in us. And I thank you this morning, Lord, that we can serve you because you are in us. It's not about us. It's about you and your glory and your honor. We thank you for the price that you have paid and we glorify your wonderful name in Jesus' name. Amen. The second key, the second key to us not being pharisaical and having being presumptuous or arrogant in our faith is develop your own personal faith and do not attempt to live off of another's 
faith. I said that the other day in one of the weekly messages. I said to you, hey, a word of encouragement is great, but spending time personally with the Lord is the best. It's wonderful to get dessert because what you're getting is you're getting dessert when people are bringing you a word. But when you are sitting at the table personally in your inner room with the Lord, you are having a full course meal. Don't just live off dessert. Too much sugar is not good for you. Get the word in its fullest form. And I'm not saying don't listen to those words. I'm saying have a personal relationship with God. For instance, as an example, like the sons of Sceva did according to Acts 19 verse 14 to 16, where they wanted to drive out demons. And when those demons manifested man, they said in the name of that God of Paul. And those guys were torn apart and their clothes were ripped off of them. And they ran out of that house because those demons said, Paul we know and Jesus we know, but who are you? Don't live off of another man's faith. Don't be arrogant. Don't be presumptuous in your faith, thinking that because other people can do things that you can do it also. You serve God for who He is in your life. And the third key, and I'm ending off with this, walk in faith. Growing in an intimate relationship with the author and the finisher of your faith. Do that. Do that every single day. In Hebrews, and I would love to just um, read Hebrews. Let me just see what is that scripture I want to refer to now. I'm sorry, I just lost my space for a moment. It is Hebrews, and it is found Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and verse 2, it says the following. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance that race which is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of god i want to say walk in faith grow in an intimate relationship with the author and the finisher of your faith so that you are known as his in john 10 verse 27 he says there that the sheep knows the shepherd voice. I want to tell you, get into that intimate relationship with God where you know the shepherd's voice. And lastly, be found in him. In Philippians 3, the word of God says the following in verse 9. Philippians 3 verse 9, the word of God says it as follows. It says, And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. I want to say to you today that you need to be found in Him. You need to walk in Him. You need to be known by Him because that is what God wants for each and every one of us. This is a mouthful. But when we walk in His will and we are led by the Holy Spirit, we will not have a presumptuous and arrogant faith, but a genuine faith founded in the love of and the revelation of God in Christ Jesus. The Pharisees served God to get the approval, acclamation and appraisal of man. While we ought to serve God that will lead to loving and serving people from a heart of love because we've encountered him for who he is. God enables us to do all he wills to do through us and in us. In our own strength, we can't accomplish anything everlasting. We might receive earthly recognition, but not heavenly rewards. Let's walk in genuine faith and not presumption and sin. I want to pray with you this morning. Let's close our eyes. And I just want to thank the Lord for this word. Lord, I want to thank you this morning that we can come and just sit around your word. I know this has been a mouthful, God, and that we have a lot to think about this morning. But I thank you that you are zooming in. You are just putting the spotlight on us so that we will have introspection, that we will live a genuine faith lift life in the flesh in Christ Jesus, not in our own strength, not in our own accord, but to the glory and honor of your wonderful name. I thank you, Lord, that we can pray this morning and say thank you for your word.
and also this morning we come and we pray for the so many people that have sicknesses diseases infirmities i stretch out my hands right now and lord as people are listening to this word of prayer right now and as we speak it i speak now healing deliverance freedom of the people's bodies in jesus name i know there's someone going in this morning for an operation i pray for him right now in jesus name i thank you god that you touch him and that you use the doctors and that you would just do a glorious work in his body and for so many other people that are struggling and suffering and that are in need we speak God that there will be a provision if you could provide for the Israelites in the desert you will provide for your sons and your daughters in the kingdom we thank you for that we bless you we honor we honor you we love you and we glorify your name in Jesus name amen I want to say it was great being with you this morning God bless you love you remember be a blessing as you are blessed in Jesus name Cheers.